What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network. Here again, reading the fabulous Bitcoin Optech newsletter. As usual, thanks go out to the entire Bitcoin Optech group. You are amazing. Today, newsletter number 11 on September 4th, 2018. This week's newsletter includes a reminder to please help test the release candidate for Bitcoin Core's next version. Information about the development of Optech's new public dashboard, summaries of two discussions on the Bitcoin Dev mailing list, and notable commits from Bitcoin infrastructure projects. Action items. Allocate time to test the Bitcoin Core version 0.17 release candidate 2. Bitcoin Core has uploaded binaries for version 0.17, release candidate 2. Testing is greatly appreciated and it can help ensure the quality of the final release. Dashboard items. Optech Dashboard, a blog post by Martin Yashimak introduces the live dashboard he developed for Optech during his internship this summer, providing not only an overview of what information the dashboard makes available to you, but a description of how he built it for anyone who wants to independently replicate the data or otherwise extend the dashboard using their own full node, which you should absolutely run, of course. The rest of the Arctech team thanks Marcin for his dedicated work and keen insights, and we wish him all the best in the upcoming years. News. Discussions of resetting the testnet. Bitcoin's first public testnet was introduced in late 2010. A few months later, it was reset to testnet 2 and reset again to the current testnet number 3 in mid-2012. Today, testnet 3 has over 1.4 million blocks and consumes over 20 gigabytes of disk space on archival nodes. A discussion was started on the Bitcoin Dev mailing list about resetting testnet again to provide a smaller chain for experimentation. In addition to discussion about whether or not it's good to having a large test chain for experimentation, it was also suggested that a future testnet might want to use signed blocks instead of proof of work to allow the chain to operate more predictably than the current testnet 3, which is prone to wild hash rate accelerations. This would also allow the easy management of testnet disaster drills, such as large chain or reorganizations. Proposed Sickhash updates. Before signing a transaction, a Bitcoin wallet creates a cryptographic hash of that of the unsigned transaction and some other data. Then, instead of signing the transaction directly, the wallet signs that hash. Since the original version 0.1 implementation of Bitcoin, wallets have been allowed to remove certain parts of the unsigned transaction from the hash before signing it, which allows those parts of the transaction to be changed by other people, such as other participants in a multi-party contract. In BIP 143, Segregated Witness preserved all of the original Bitcoin version 0.1 signature hash flags, but made some minor but very useful changes to what data wallets include in the hash that made it harder for miners to denial of service attack other miners and which made it easier for underpowered devices, such as hardware wallets, to protect user funds. This week, BIP 143 co-author Johnson Lau posted some suggestion changes to the SIG hash flags, including new flags that could be implemented as a soft fork, 
using the witness script update mechanism provided as part of SegWit. If the changes are adopted, some of the notable advantages include making it easier for hardware wallets to securely participate in coin join style transactions, as well as other small contracts, potentially easier fee bumping by an individual party in a multi-party transaction and preventing counterparties and third parties to sophisticated smart contracts from bloating the size of multi-party transactions and denial of service attack that, lower, that lowers a transaction's fee priority. Notable commits. Notable commits this week in Bitcoin Core, LND, and C Lightning. Remember, new merges to Bitcoin Core are made to its master development branch and are unlikely to become part of the upcoming version 0.17 release. You'll probably have to wait until version 0.18 in about six months from now. Bitcoin Core can merge after being dep depre depre depreciated for several major release and disabled by default in the upcoming version 0.17 release, the built-in account system in Bitcoin Core has been removed from the master branch, the master development branch. The account system was added in late 2010 to allow an early Bitcoin exchange to manage their user accounts in Bitcoin Core but it lacked many of the features desirable for true productive systems, like atomic database updates, and it often confused users, so removing it gracefully has been the goal for several years. Another Bitcoin Core merge. When Bitcoin Core receives a transaction whose fee per virtual byte is below the minimum fee, it ignores that transaction. BIP 133, which was implemented in Bitcoin Core version 0.13, allows a node to tell its peers that its minimum fee rate is so that those peers to don't waste bandwidth by sending transactions that will be ignored. This pull request now provides that information for each peer in the get peer info RPC using the new mine fee filters or minimum fee filters value, allowing you to easily discover the minimum fee rate being used by your peers. C Lightning now allows you to ask Lightning D to calculate a fee rate target for your on chain transactions by passing the either urgent, normal, or slow to the fee rate parameter. Alternatively, you may use this parameter to manually specify a particular fee rate you want to use. As always, peers, subscribe to the Bitcoin Optech newsletter as it provides a wealth of information. And as usual, huge thanks go out to the Bitcoin Optech group who provides this phenomenal resource on information. As always, see you on the next show. Bye-bye.